Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Fantasy Talk, my name's Chase, and today I thought it'd be really fun to kind of do just a little fun video where I'm going to try to pick which Wheel of Time character would be the best at replacing Wesley in The Princess Bride when he's trying to go and rescue Buttercup. So I picked the six characters that I thought would be the most interesting to talk about. There will be some spoilers for character abilities, so I'm not actually going to talk about too many major plot events in the Wheel of Time, but I will be talking about what these characters are able to do later on in the series. I do want to set some rules real quick of like how I'm judging them and what they are allowed and not allowed to do. So number one, if you are a channeler in the Wheel of Time, you are not allowed to use channeling. So you kind of have to face it in the spirit of the same competition or the same obstacles that Wesley had to face. And number two is if you do have an ability that is like an inactive ability, you are allowed to use it because it's just basically part of your character. The third thing is that you do have to actually engage in each scenarios. You can't just sneak around Fezzik or anything like that like you do have to actually go through each one just like Wesley did the last thing is gonna be that with Vizzini instead of the character putting in the poison into the goblets Vizzini will be the one doing it and then the character will have to interact with him and somehow try to get past him now the scoring scale is out of 10 tries how many times is that character moving on to the next obstacle so the character at the end who has the highest total score will be the character selected as the best Wheel of Time character to go and get this rescue mission completed first I'm gonna go with Randall Thor so I think a lot of people are thinking like, hey, Rand's gonna have a great chance here. I think I'm gonna push back a little bit because number one, Rand is extremely powerful in the Wheel of Time, but most of that power comes from his channeling. With him not being able to do that in this scenario, I think he's gonna have a little bit of a tougher time. Let's go ahead and break down each round. So Rand is really, really good. He's a great swordsman, but even against the best blade masters in the Wheel of Time, he does struggle somewhat and he will even admit in the fight that He's not actually up to their par. He's got a lot of mitigating factors like the wounds in his side and things like that that are going to be at play here too. But Rand does have Luz Theron to call on and maybe get some advice. And he is Taviran, which is an inactive ability that will probably help him. I'm going to give him 6 out of 10. I think he gets a slight edge here against an ego because even an ego is not even the best in his own world. So actually against Fezzik, I think Rand is getting, getting whooped in this round because Rand is not the quickest. I mean, he's, what, 6 foot 5? He's not thick, like he's a thin six foot five. He's not really used to a ton of hand-to-hand -hand combat. I know we've seen him do it a couple times in the series, especially I think in like the Path of Daggers maybe. Fezzik's weakness is quickness. If he gets his hands on Rand, I don't think Rand's gonna be able to get away from him. Like Fezzik's pretty quick for his size. So I think Fezzik is taking him probably eight times out of 10. And the wounds in his side, if he gets hit there, like, all right, against Vizzini, Rand's Tavira nature doesn't manifest in a way that would necessarily alter the 50-50 chance of drinking poison in a positive way. So I think that Rand's just five out of 10. This is a complete toss up. There's no clear winner here. It's just completely up to chance. So that leaves Rand with a total of 17 out of 30 possible points. All right, next up is Min. So you're probably wondering, why did I include Min? Well, I think she's gonna come at this from a totally different tactic. So what does Inigo want most in the world? He wants revenge on the six finger man who killed his father, right? So I think men can say like, hey, I, I know for sure what your future holds and she can trade that information in exchange for him letting her basically move on and pass. Now let's say he doesn't do that. I think that men actually maybe two to three times out of 10 in just a straight up physical fight could plant one of those daggers in his eyeball or something with the added bonus of her being able to leverage the information that she can trade. So I think I'm gonna give her five out of 10 that she's gonna be able to get past him at least half the time. So like I said earlier, I think Fezzik, he's really good against opponents that are a little slower. I think men's quick enough, you know, go under his legs. She can jump around, she can hop on his back and try to choke him out. So I'll give her four out of 10 chances that she'll actually get past him. So with men, I think the way her ability would manifest with Bazzini wouldn't actually help her that much because let's say that she sees that he dies from poison. Okay, well then she knows to drink whatever and it's gonna come true no matter what. Although he could die from poison at a later event, so that's not even really guaranteed. And second, let's say that she sees that he dies of old age. Well, then she knows that in that moment he's not dying of that poison, which means that no matter what she drinks, she'll probably end up being the one that dies. So really, if Min sees that he doesn't die of poison right there, she absolutely should not drink. And then she just needs to gamble and see if she can somehow distract him and get Buttercup away from him. So I think this is just a complete toss up still, even with Min. So that puts Min's total at 14 out of 30. So next up is Loyal. So Loyal is gonna be able to use his big ax, right, against an ego. But now Loyal is huge, he's got a huge reach, He's got his axe and he's got a lot of power. Inigo is using a rapier, he's a lot smaller, 
He's definitely relying on quickness. Loyal is really quick for his side, actually. I think we know that the Ogier can move. So I think he's taking an ego out like eight times out of 10. Nothing against an ego. I just think that Loyal can just swing much further than an ego could probably get out of the way of. And even if he doesn't hit him with a blade, he's clubbing him or tripping him. And then he's just going to be all over him in a heartbeat and it's just going to be over. All right, against Fezzik. Now this one's kind of interesting because Fezzik in every other match is going to be fighting someone who's pretty much much smaller than him. But Loyal is about his size, right? Or maybe even a little bigger. So Fezzik is used to fighting like 10 small people and not one gigantic person. So even hand-to-hand, -hand, no axe, I think Loyal is just pretty much wiping the floor with Fezzik because he's used to fighting Trollocs, which are basically Fezzik's size, except probably a little more ferocious. The only way I see Fezzik winning here is by charming Loyal with his wordplay. You know, Loyal is all about the books. He loves words. You know, Fezzik's all about rhyming and trying to find words so maybe he can lull them to sleep with you know, hey, I mean it, anybody want a peanut? All of a sudden, Loyal's just having a good time, and then Fezzik's smashing his head in. I think Loyal, 8 out of 10, he's beating Fezzik, and moving on to Vizzini. Now, against Vizzini, Loyal, Vizzini, both intellectuals, so I think this is just going to be like a staring contest, and they can sit there and reason back and forth, like, hey, you would never put this in front of me because a clever man, blah, 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 blah. 50-50 chance, toss-up. Loyal gets 21 out of 30. All right, next one up is Brigitta. So Brigitta, hero of the horn, you know, she's got that bow and arrow. So that's her weapon of choice. Like she is not a sword fighter. So it's an ego with a rapier versus Brigitta with a bow and arrow. The thing is, archers are really vulnerable in close combat. But Brigitta with that bow is basically like Legolas. So Legolas even up close, right? I mean, he's like sniping people from point blank range. If an ego can get past, if he can just somehow squirm, slide, get in and get up close with his sword, then Brigitte pretty much doesn't have a whole lot of defense. So I'm going to give her 8 out of 10. I think she's winning this pretty much every single time. She's putting that arrow right in his eye socket. All right, against Fezzik. Now, Brigitte is not the smallest or lithe or quickest. I think she's more solidly built, right? So I think Brigitte is still going to be able to handle him more times than not. She's still going to be able to use quickness. I think she can actually take a little bit of the pounding if he starts slamming her into rocks and stuff. Uh, she's a little stronger, so when she puts that choke hold in, it's going to really lock in. It's going to take him out. I think six out of ten times, she gets past him and move on to Vizzini. Now, despite Brigitte's ability to knock back copious amounts of alcohol, I don't think that's going to save her from the poison. I don't think she has any kind of extra advantage here. So again, five out of ten is a complete toss-up. So overall, Brigitte scores 19 out of 30. All right, so it's going to be Matt from Cawthon. All right, so against Inigo, I don't think this is a hot take. Matt is just destroying him. So we already know that he fought off two of the Wheel of Time's best swordsmen with just a quarter staff when he was basically on death's doorstep. So I think he's taking him nine times out of 10. All right, against Fezzik, I actually don't think Matt's gonna perform as well as you might think. You know, you know, we know Matt, Matt's not a physical fighter. Like, yeah, he's got a spear, but he's not punching anybody. He can do that when he's pressed, but I just don't think that's his strong suit. Maybe his luck will come to play and Fezzik will like trip over a rock and smack his head. I think this is a toss up, five out of 10. All right, so next up is Matt versus Vizzini. Now, his luck doesn't work 10 out of 10 times. Anything that's pure chance, his luck is gonna affect it. Nine times out of 10, no matter which cup he picks, it's gonna be the right cup. Vizzini's going down, he's getting buttercup, and he's walking away. So that leaves Matt with 23 out of 30. All right, and last up is Avienda. So Avienda was formerly part of the Maidens of the Spear, so we know she can fight. So I actually think the Avienda versus Anigo matchup is pretty close, her spears versus his rapier. But the reason why I give her an edge, the terrain is actually kind of deserty. It reminds you of the IO Waste. I think that she's used to the sand, so she's going to be a little more comfortable in the terrain, maybe have some tricks that she can use. I think 7 out of 10 times she's beaten Anigo and she's moving on to Fezzik. Avienda is the closest to the Man in Black out of all of these when it comes to fighting Fezzik. She is solidly built. She's going to be able to dodge him she's super fast and she's strong she could take a beating so i don't think this is gonna be much of a contest i think she's just wiping the floor with physic i think maybe one time he gets lucky so against vizzini now avienda doesn't have any extra ability that she can really leverage here so it's pretty much a toss-up but i'm gonna give her one extra point because i think avienda is very clever so I, i'm just seeing this scenario in my head where she is able to sip the cup hold the poison in her mouth so she feigns dying she goes down he lets down his guard all of a sudden she's flipping up she's taking him out and then she's getting buttercup so i give her a six out of ten chance that she beats Vizzini. and so that leaves her with a score of 22 out of 30 and that means that matt is our winner and you know i try not to have a preconceived notion coming in but it was going to be hard for anyone to beat matt he's pretty much built for this competition with the sword fighting with the luck factor with Vizzini. Avienda is right there. Between those two, either one, I would love to have them try to save me if I were Buttercup. All right, so this was really fun. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you know, think about hitting that subscribe button. 
And then every time I post new content, you'll be notified. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a comment. It helps me out. I really appreciate it. And I really want to continue the discussion down below. Thank you for watching, guys. See you all next time. Peace.